Welcome, let's talk about a very interesting topic which is coal and petroleum. Now this topic is very much close to natural resources and the topics related to what we had covered under SST. What we would understand today in this lecture is Firstly, what are natural resources? The resources which are bestowed by the nature are called as natural resources. Now, these resources can be broadly classified into two. I can say then this, these can be inexhaustible or these can be exhaustible. Exhaustible means those which are present in limited quantity. Inexhaustible means those are present in ample and would not end or would not actually vanish off very quickly. So under inexhaustible we say solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy are examples of inexhaustible natural resources. However under exhaustible we would firstly say fossil fuels. Besides fossil fuels we do have forest, wildlife which are present in limited quantity and if not taken care, they would deplete at one point of time. Under these fossil fuels, we have three important ones. Firstly, the coal. Secondly, the petroleum. And thirdly, the natural gas. All of these we would discuss today one by one. Now, when we say fossil fuels, what are they? Over the years, when the various dead and decaying matter, matter went under the surface, be it the trees or the animals, they piled up in the inner layers of the earth, they decomposed and formed carbon and its compounds. So these carbonious forms, the process which occurs is called as carbonization for the formation of coal. And this is the process through which coal, petroleum and natural gas has been Farm. Now, when we talk about petroleum, natural gas, refining those becomes an important element. So, three important fossil fuels that we would talk today, coal, petroleum and natural gas. How they are found, what are the products that can be derived from these are all interesting to study. So, let's dive into these one by one. So, for the first, the coal. Now, coal is black in color. It is considered as hard as a stone. Now this coal can be used for variety of purpose. In the ancient time it was used for cooking. Still in the remote areas where you do not have uh, gas connections, uh, coal is used as one of the means, wood is used as one of the means for cooking. Then coal in the prior days was used in a steam engine for locomotives. So for the railways steam engines were used. And coal was also a source of electricity, is also a source of electricity through the thermal power stations. So, electricity through the thermal power stations. Now, nearly 300 million years ago, Earth had a cover of a very dense forest, mainly in the low-lying wetland areas. Now, this forest got buried under the soil. When they buried, soil deposited on top of it. So they buried and soil was deposited on top of it. As a result, what happened? The temperature started to increase and the material that was buried actually sank deeper and deeper. Now, with high pressure and high temperature, this material got converted into what? It got converted into coal. Now, this process of conversion of dead vegetative material into coal is called as what? This is called as the process of carbonization. Very, very important term. You must be familiar with it. So what happened? I repeat in a gist again. 300 million years ago, under the dense forest cover, which was mainly the low-lying wetland area, these forests got buried under the soil. With increasing temperature and pressure, this coal was formed through the process of carbonization. Now, when the coal is heated, it is mainly what? It is carbon. carbon. So, what is released in the atmosphere is carbon dioxide. Now, this carbon dioxide is obviously linked to pollution and ultimately linked to increasing temperature through global warming. But the product 
which is obtained from coal is really important. Three important products that we would talk today. First is coal. From the coal is coke. Coke is a tough, non-porous, black substance which is a most pure form of carbon and it is used for extraction of various metals used in the process of steel manufacturing. So under steel manufacturing, coke is an important constituent. The next is coal tar. Now coal tar is a thick liquid blackish in color with a very uh, foul smell we can say an unpleasant smell and it has nearly 200 substances that are mixed into it. From this coal tar there is various things that are prepared for example explosives, lubricants, oil, paints, Plastics, roofing material, photographic material are some of those two sides. Also, nowadays, uh, bitumen, which is a petroleum product rather than a coal tar, which is a coal product, is used for metalling the road. So, previously, coal tar was a huge amount used for metalling of road. And now, rather than coal tar, which is a coal product, bitumen is used. And this bitumen is what? This bitumen is a petroleum product, right? The next is coal gas. Now coal gas is obtained when coal is being converted into coke. So process in which coal gets converted into coke, in that process coal, coal gas is used. Right? Now this process in which coal is converted into coke, what is released is coal gas. Now this coal gas is used as a fuel for many coal producing plants. Uh, it was initially used for street lightning. Later on, rather than the purpose of lightning, uh, lighting, it was also used for heat. So this coal gas was initially used for lighting, later on also used for heat. So for both these purposes, the coal gas has been actually used. The next is petroleum. Now as we saw, coal was obtained from vegetative product which buried under the soil over years and years. Petroleum on the other hand is because of the remnants of animals buried deep inside. So a little difference that we will see. We'll come to that in a while. So this petroleum is dark, oily, unpleasant in smell and is mixed, is a mixture of petroleum gas, petrol, diesel, oil, paraffin, wax and so on. Now both petrol and diesel, both of them together are called as petroleum. Okay. So either if I mention petrol or diesel vehicle, those run on what? Those run on petroleum. The refining occurs through fractional distillation at which at different temperatures different elements actually are released into the atmosphere. So petroleum are formed when various living organisms got buried under the sea. Now these dead bodies settled at the bottom and this dead bodies got covered with a layer of clay or sand over millions of years because there was no air and high temperature and pressure these got transformed into petroleum and natural gas. The first oil well which was drilled was in Pennsylvania state in uh, United States then in um, uh, Assam in India in the region of Makum the first oil well was discovered later on we had oil wells in Assam, Gujarat the regions of uh, Godavari, Krishna, Bombay High or Mumbai High as it is called as so those were some of the areas where petroleum started to um, uh, started to be found. Now this petroleum was extracted through a process known as fractional distillation and this process is what is called as the refining of petroleum. Now when the refining of petroleum is done various byproducts are released wax, oil, uh, then there are various petrochemicals being released. These petrochemicals are used for detergents, fiber industry, plastic industry. Again from natural gas, hydrogen is released, 
which is uh, used in the production of fertilizers uh, mainly urea so hydrogen gas obtained from the natural gas is used in the production of urea which is a important fertilizer that we require so because of the very high commercial value of petroleum this is what is also called as black gold black in color but is still really important so how it is found we see that there are wells now these wells have to reach to the depth of the earth where these are found so this is the layer at which you have gas so from here if you drill the well here you would find natural gas if you drill the well further below you would find oil so it is in the layer of water oil being lighter in density fluids so oil and on the top of it is gas and between the various impervious rocks these gas oil and water remains so when wells are dug this can be obtained and actually utilized the next is the constituents of petroleum so petroleum in liquid gas can be in the liquid form can be as lpg which is used as a common fuel for home and industry then petrol for motor vehicles for aviation that is the aeroplanes jet fuels as a solvent for dry cleaning kerosene is used for stoves lamps and jet aircrafts diesel is used for heavy motor vehicles and electric generators mainly for generators nowadays so diesel vehicles are not popular across the globe uh, india does have diesel vehicles uh, lubricating oil for the purpose of lubrication of various machines paraffin wax for candles vaseline ointments perfume industry where um, uh, perfumed candles are made bitumen as i said for road surfacing for creating paints these are some of the uses for bitumen coming on next is the last one which is natural gas natural gas is transported through pipelines and it is stored under very high pressure and therefore called as cng compressed natural gas since it is under high pressure it is called as compressed and this is used for power generation as a fuel it is used preferably because it creates lesser pollution also it can be brought directly to the home through the pipelines and is used for um, the domestic uh, cooking purposes so uh, gujarat vadodara ahmedabad then you have parts of delhi are some of the areas where natural gas pipelines do exist natural gas is also used as one of the major materials for chemical industry for fertilizer industry as well now besides this one very important thing is the burning causes pollution as we said this pollution can ultimately lead to global warming but where do we find the deposits of natural gas in india is really important so we find the deposits in the region of tripura rajasthan maharashtra and krishna godavari delta so krishna godavari delta where you have oil shale deposits as well as natural gas deposits now under the uh, petroleum conservation research association what is really important to reduce the emissions or the pollution caused by fossil fuel is turning off the vehicles when you are at a traffic signal uh, driving at a constant speed sudden fluctuations in the uh, speed would increase the consumption of fossil fuels or uh, petroleum and its products then uh, also ensuring that the tire pressure in the vehicles is optimum and maintaining a proper maintenance of the vehicle on a regular basis are some of the ways to ensure that unnecessary use of extra petroleum is cut down so those were some of the important things that we have discussed here fractional distillation distillation as i said is a very important part of coal and petroleum uh, at different temperatures different elements are released now these constituents when released are used for various purposes so that's that's what is really important i hope you enjoyed the session we'll be covering further ncert topics in the upcoming sessions stay tuned and below is the link for uh, useful study material preparation thanks for joining in